Hello again YouTube, I've just got an update for you. Um, a couple of updates actually. Um, well one, I've added a switch, a new switch, and uh, that's connecting a solar array to a uh, my charge controller and a new grid tie inverter that I've added. I've added a 600 watt grid tie inverter. Um, the voltage range is between, I'd say between 20 and 60 volts and it's a 600 watt in addition to my 500 watt uh, grid tie inverter. The 500 watt is still connected to the battery bank. Uh, that one there is connected directly to the panels. And I'm revisiting the idea of connecting the panels to the, uh, uh, directly to a grid tie inverter. Um, this one here I can't connect directly to my panels, either, either solar. I have two solar arrays and I can't connect them to either one because they put out too much power. Um, and I definitely don't want to put them in parallel because that kind of negates the benefits that I get from a, a using an MPPT charge controller. These grid tie inverters have MPP, uh, MPPT functionality, but it's, it leaves much to be desired. They are, it's not good. I mean, any, I think anybody will tell you that the MPPT functionality of these, grid, these cheap grid tie inverters are not good at all. This one was a cheap one that I got from Amazon. It's 600 watts, but you know it, it does what it needs to do, I suppose. Um, when I connect it, when I hit this switch here, when I turn this switch and I connect it directly to uh, the panel itself, it's a, right now. Let's say it's a it's a sunny day. It's a it's a clear. It's a cold and it's a sunny day. And even now, I can tell it's. You know, looking at right here, that particular grid tie connected to two Kyocera panels that, that produce 270 watts. Um, it's only putting out 100 and 145 watts connecting directly to the panels. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's like maybe uh, almost 11 o'clock in the morning and so forth. So, I mean, it's a, it's a sunny, clear day and, it, and the temperature is cold enough so those panels will really, really kick out some power. So, you know, Connecting directly to the panels, um, I mean, it has its benefits, but uh, connecting to the battery, in my opinion, it has even more benefits. Uh, by connecting directly to the battery and uh, with my secondary inverter, you know, you know, my uh, kilowatts going, or my watt, watts going into the house, as you can see, hopefully you can see, is 630 watts or 631. So by using both of them like that, I got 630 watts going directly uh, into or supplementing the power into my home. Um, so I, I did a little bit of experimentation and it has its benefits. Uh, some of the lessons learned uh, that I've come up with uh, is for one thing, uh, you know, to charge your battery bank, uh, depending on how many batteries you've got and so forth and how deeply discharged they are, I mean, you can get a panel, in my opinion, you can, you can get a panel uh, between 150 to 200 watts and it will sufficiently charge your battery bank. If all you want is a backup system, you don't need more than a, between 150 to 200 watts, in my opinion. Um, however, if you want to really generate power and, put, and supplement the power in your home and so forth, if you got anything more than 200 watts of solar power or panels uh, putting, uh, coming into your home, uh, then I would definitely recommend getting a grid tie so you or some type of dump load utility so that you won't uh, uh, some dump load something or other so that you won't uh, waste that power okay and you know uh, with 630 watts coming back in that's that's pretty good uh, the system's been running for a couple of hours now um, I've got it on a timer okay and what happens is when it reaches uh, around noon, okay, that'll give me, because it's winter time, I'll, I'll still get about three hours of, of charging power. So it'll take, you know, with, with all of those panels, they can charge my battery bank in a, maybe a couple of hours uh, completely from, like right now it's at 24.7 volts. Um, you know, it'll, it won't take that, it won't take them no time to bring it up to 25 and 26 volts easy. Uh, as I said, it's been running since early this morning around 8 a.m. Um, I got 11.5 amps coming out of the bank and I'm at just 91%, okay, which is fine. At 24.7 volts, yeah, I can live with that. Um, uh, let's see, one, one other thing that I've, I've included, I went out and I purchased this, uh, it's like a trickle charger, it's a smart uh, speed charger. Uh, but it's like a it's a battery maintainer. 
uh, essentially. And so what I did was my little portable generator uh, that I built, I just have it hooked up uh, to that little battery maintainer. And I plugged a battery maintainer into my main, one of my uh, uh, power strips here. So it is being powered from my, from this inverter. It's a pure sign inverter. So um, it's not gonna hurt my charger in, you know, in the slightest because it is, it is a pure sign inverter. And so right now you can see that green light, okay? That basically says it's just in maintenance mode. So it's just barely, it's just, it's just barely trickling, okay? To maintain this battery at you know well over 13 uh, well over 13 volts so <clears throat> my solar system is actually maintaining uh, my little portable system um, as opposed to putting up another panel it's really not necessary because uh, I, I have enough panels and I have enough power coming out, uh, in the battery bank to maintain that with not a problem um, but anyway you know I've discovered I may uh, later on you know Hook this up to the battery uh, to the battery bank as well, just so I can get some more consistency. Um, or I just may leave it as is because uh, right now I have 670 watts of of power of, of panels, uh, you know, either on the roof or on the ray out, outside in the yard. Due to inefficiencies and so forth, I'm sure I can, you know, say okay between 550 watts, easy. And right now I'm pulling, I'm putting. Uh, 625 watts back into the house. Uh, I went out and checked the meter. Yes, it is spinning backwards um, because you know I don't consume that per hour. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, just a new update. Again, just grid tie revisited. Uh, if you don't have a grid tie and you got more than a, more than 200 watts of panels, um, I definitely you know recommend that you get one. Just just you know it's it's very beneficial. Um, also, if you have a portable unit, a this uh, little uh, little speed charger maintainer slash maintainer that I got from Advanced Auto Parts, it was really cheap, twenty, thirty bucks, maybe yeah, thirty, thirty-five bucks or so, something like that. And it trickle charges, you know, my portable system here, which I showed on the previous video that ran my uh, compact freezer for twenty-four hours. Um, you know, it, it works. It works great. I have it just plugged into you know one of my power strips there. This inverter, my pure sign inverter, runs all the time, uh, 24/7. So there's always a constant load on my battery bank anyway. And it, it because I have a a 24 volt system. This this uh, chart, this uh, um, inverter only pulls about half an amp. Okay, and when it's in, when it's doing something, even when I've got other things plugged into it. You know, uh, like lighting and, and other things. It's a it's a half an amp, so it's really not. It's like no strain on my battery bank at all. Um, this switch right here, I got off of Amazon. I mean, really cheap. Um, again, the inverter, the grid tie inverter. Uh, I mean, if you pay more than 150 bucks for one of these, uh, you know, I, you, I think you probably pay too much personally. Um, I don't know. I forgot how much I paid for it, uh, but I, I really don't think I paid a, in, in excess of maybe 150, 160 bucks. Who knows? Uh, but it was it was cheap, and and so oh, oh yeah, I had to add a, another bus bar here, um, but that's that's no problem. But anyway, that's just an update on what I got going on uh, right now. Again, the system has been running for a couple of hours, and for for two hours, let's say it's, yeah, it's actually run for, let's see, eight, nine, ten, about, uh, yeah, about almost three hours, actually, and three hours I've been putting in steadily at least 600 and maybe 20 watts, 620 watts, so multiply that times three, and it kind of gives you an idea how much power I've, put, I've uh, supplemented my home with, and it's going to run for one more hour. Uh, before I shut it down to begin the uh, battery recharging process and my battery bank right now is at 24.7 volts and there's 11.4 amps coming out and I'm at 91 percent again that's fine okay all right that's my update at least for now YouTube uh, with grid tie revisited grid tie revisited and we're doing okay I I took my fan and I, uh, you know, I kind of put it down here and blow it on this one here because that one right there is, I mean, that's that's a lot of watts coming out of that one, so it has a tendency to get hot if you don't cool it down. Uh, this one here at, you know, 150 watts is a 600 watt inverter, and that's only maybe 150 watts coming out of it. Um, eh, 
you know, it really doesn't get overly hot. Okay. But anyway, that's my update. Take care, YouTube. Hello YouTube, this is just an update. The charging cycle is complete. Um, I ran the system for about four hours and I charged the system. You know, I started charging around 12 o'clock. It's a little after four o'clock now. Uh, the ending voltage on the system is 26 volts. There's nothing coming out and we're at 100%. And running it for around four hours at 620 watts going in per hour. So I was able to generate 2.4 kilowatts of power, actually 2,480, I believe. So roughly 2.4 kilowatts of power um, with this configuration. Basically, the top, will, you know, tied into some panels. Uh, my uh, uh, solar array number one, if you will, and then the the bottom is tied directly to the battery bank. So both of them running together. Uh, averaged about 620 watts per hour. Um, after and shutting it off at at 12 o'clock, um, the batteries were reached. It's a little after four now. Um, sun's going down, and the battery bank is fully charged. Fully charged again. Uh, just again to verify. Uh, 26 26 volts. Okay, I got an amp or point point one amp coming out of the battery bank. Um, and 100% full. Okay. So, okay, YouTube. I still stand by my earlier assumptions that, you know, I think tying them directly, tying grid ties directly to the battery bank will, you know, give you a little more consistency. Um, and, you know, I, I think I get, I still get, I think, I do believe I still get better performance, um, at least in my configuration. Again, up here, you know, getting it directly from the panels and pulling, you know, with the 500 watt uh, grid tie inverter, I'm pulling it directly from the battery bank. Um, 620 watts per hour for four hours, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And also the battery bank now is completely charged. Um, you know, stopping it at noon and then giving it at least, at least two, three hour, two or three hours to recharge. Um, yeah, it was more than an, more than adequate. Um, also the battery bank didn't, didn't really drain, um, you know, past maybe a 10% depth of discharge, if that. Um, so it's not bad. I think overall it is still plausible or feasible um, to tie your at least one grid tie to a battery bank. Um, so I'm pretty satisfied with the results. Okay, again, uh, 620 watts per hour times four hours. So we're talking 2,480 watts, 2.4 kilowatts. Um, hopefully my math is right. <laughs> okay. Take care, YouTube.